Edith Neumeyer. How are you doing today? And I'm going to do finally a video on Sabbath keeping. People have asked me to do a video on Sabbath and it's coming up all the time. I really do um, agree with much of what the uh, Seventh Day Adventist uh, Church is saying, much of it, especially the uh, um, uh, uh, end times theology. But there's one thing that I do not, absolutely do not agree with them. That's the Sabbath. Okay, it it makes my hair curl. Okay, why? Because I know my scripture, and I'm asking. Why are they not reading scripture? If you know scripture, you know that we are not under the law anymore. There are two covenants, people. There is an old covenant made on Mount Sinai. That's what Moses was the kind of mediator between the Hebrews and God. Then we have the new covenant that is made by Jesus, and he is the high priest. And we can read that in Hebrews. Okay, Hebrews is a very important book, which I will use today to show. I have a feeling that these people that believe in keeping the Sabbath or, yeah, keeping the Sabbath, have read the New Testament especially Galatians and Hebrews. Those are key um, letters that we need to be aware of and really study. And I'll go be reading some of it today. Now, you know, Hebrews is not written by Paul. I don't know if it matters, but I think we need to know the whole truth. So Hebrews is actually written by a nameless person. Paul always uh, mentioned himself in his letters. Hebrews did not mention the author. Why not? Could it be that maybe a woman wrote Hebrews? Of course, people are going to flip out when I say that. But no, it's not so unlikely. We know for sure that the person who put together the canon, the New Testament canon, knew Hebrews was not written by Paul. Why? Because all the letters were arranged by size and Romans in uh, the letters of Paul was the largest, Philemon the smallest. So Hebrews would have been what the first letter really if Paul would have read it, uh, wrote it, but it is separate. Okay, separate. That's one of the reasons, because we know the guy who put the canon together, I think it was Jerome, knew it. Okay, Some church fathers assume it was Paul, because it uses Paul's language. Lots of uh, Paul's um, teaching, or it sounds like Paul's writing. But then again, Paul wrote most of the letters he didn't write. And who wrote most of the letters of Paul? Many of them wrote Phoebe. Okay, Phoebe. Not Phoebe. Uh, Priscilla, sorry. Priscilla. Uh, Aquila and Priscilla. So uh, uh, Priscilla wrote those letters. So she was very familiar with his language. But I don't want to go into detail today because I want to focus on Sabbath. Okay, are we still under the law? Are we still going to have to follow the law of Moses? Of course not. Of course not. Now that should be clear if you are really reading your Bible. Now let's go. The first thing we need to be really going to is Acts. We're going to go to Acts 15. Now, early on, when Paul went out to uh, make disciples to go to the to the the um, 
the Gentiles make disciples. Of course, it came to this information came to the apostles and the early disciples of Jesus. And there was this big thing about Judaizers coming into the Gentiles or coming to the Gentile churches and trying to tell them that they have to keep the law of Moses and have themselves circumcised. And this debate or this uh, argument went, of course, to the church in Jerusalem. And so the apostles prayed and the elders there prayed about it and decided exactly what they wrote in Acts 15. Okay, Acts 15. They wrote, with them they sent the following letter, and you can read all of 15, the apostles and elders, your brothers, to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, Sicilia. Greetings. Now, are you guys included too? If you call yourself a Gentile believer, are you included in this? Yes. Matter of fact, all believers are included in this, including including Hebrews or Jews. Okay, this has become the standard. We have heard that some went out from us without our authorization and disturbed you, troubling your minds by what they said. So we will agree to choose some men and send them to you with our dear friend Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are sending Judas and Silas to confirm my word or by word of mouth what we are writing. So they had witnesses, two witnesses sending along with the letter and Barnabas and Paul so people would believe Barnabas and Paul. It seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. And here they come. You are to abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. You will do well to avoid these things. Now, this is not a commandment. Okay? It's not a commandment. This is saying, you will do well to avoid these things. That's what he says. Okay? It seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us to not burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. He said requirements, but at the end he says, you do well if you avoid these. Of course, if we don't avoid them, Jesus died for them anyways. But he says it's good for you. It's good for you to keep yourself away from blood, from meat strangled, from uh, uh, strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. Those are really basically four things. Sacrificing of idols. Okay, You are from food sacrificed to idols. Does that mean they can't sacrifice idols? Of course not. Okay, I mean, be reasonable here. But these are the things that they were told them to stay away from. They didn't say, hey, hello, keep the law. No, they're admitting that the law is a burden. And when we continue to read the other letters from Paul and Hebrews, we see that we're not under the law anymore. But this is the first thing from the apostles themselves and the elders themselves, okay, telling us, no, you're not under the law of Moses anymore. Not that they didn't write it out and say, this is what it is, you're not. But here, these are the things they wrote. This is the only thing you have to consider. You don't have to circumcise. 
Okay, that was the main reason why they went to the Gentiles. They pushed circumcision, not even the Sabbath. Okay, not even the Sabbath. Sabbath. Now you can read it, you know, you know, before all the stuff too. But I want to just only say this much because this is what is important. Then Paul, then Paul, let's go to Galatians. Because Paul then addressed a letter to the same people later on. Because they kept wanting to be distracted by these Judaizers. These Judaizers kept coming. Okay? I don't know if they didn't, you know, see it in the first place. But these Judaizers kept coming and trying to disrupt the faith these Galatians had. And of course, most likely other people in that region. So Paul again wrote a letter to them and telling them that they need to remember what he taught them. And here is what he wrote in Galatians 3. And you need to read all of Galatians because that ties into exactly, into detail, exactly why the apostles wrote this letter to the churches in Asia Minor. Okay? That's why he read why, why he read them. Now, here's what Paul wrote. You foolish Galatians, call some fools. Okay? Call some fools. Who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish at the beginning by means of the Spirit? Are you now trying to finish by means of flesh? Flesh means doing works. Have you exercised so much in vain, if it really was in vain? So again, I ask, does God give you the spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. For all who rely on the works of the law are under the curse, as it is written. Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Nobody can fulfill the law. Nobody. Did you know that I think about 70, I'm going to be on the safe side. 75% of the law cannot be fulfilled because it pertains to sacrifices. And those sacrifices that Moses instructed cannot be fulfilled today because the temple is gone. And the temple is gone on purpose because they had to realize that a new covenant has started. This new covenant is started by Jesus and he is now the high priest, which we will see in uh, Hebrews. Okay? In Hebrews. So let's go to chapter 4, what Paul says there. Now we cannot read, I cannot read um, everything. Cannot read everything because it's just way too much. But if you have not studied Galatians, and Hebrews, it is time for you to do so. I know I'm concentrating uh, my focus on studies now on end times, okay? But I have done 
you know, I have studied Paul and the letters and the gospel, the New Testament, the Old Testament for many, many years. I became a Christian or a born again believer in 76. And just the last two years, I have focused on um, end times prophecy. So I know my Bible. And that's what we need to do. We need to know what the Bible says, what scripture says, especially the New Testament. We cannot start in the, in the Old Testament. It's good to know the Old Testament. It's good to know the law of Moses because it can help us regulate many of our things. Like I have gone to Moses in regards to um, divorce. Okay. It's good to even know, like, for instance, the instructions on um, the dietary things, because they can be helpful as well. I will not put away um, the law of Moses, but I am really realizing that we cannot fulfill it anymore because we are under a new covenant, and it's not what we need to fulfill. Christ fulfilled all the law, the whole law, everyone, 100%. And he established a new covenant. And with the new covenant, there are new laws, but these new laws are very similar to the old laws. They don't go into detail with the, you know, sacrifices and all these things. And of course, we know that Christ summoned up the whole law into two laws, love God and your neighbor. And then somebody asked me, who is your neighbor? My neighbor is my neighbor. Okay? My neighbor is not just the believers. My neighbor is everybody. Everybody. I have to respect everybody. Okay? Not just the believers. People, that is what's wrong with the Jews. That they only respect the Jews. No, that's not what it means. It's not what it means. The law is given to all people. And therefore, the neighbor, my neighbor, is everybody. Do you remember um, the story, the parable that Jesus told about the Good Samaritan? Now, the Samaritan is considered not a neighbor to a Jew. And that's why... Um, they didn't help this person on the road because they didn't know who it was. It was in Samaria, so what? Only a Samaritan helped. And everybody else walked by. But for Samarian, Samaritan, all are neighbors. And that's what Jesus tried to say with the Good Samaritan parable. We are all neighbors. We all need to be nice and good to everybody. Doesn't mean we need to be, uh, um, uh, you know, bullied by people. We need to set boundaries. That's not what I'm saying, but I am digressing. I mean, digressing. So let's stay on task here. So we're going to then Galatians 9. But now that you know God or rather are known by God, how is it? That you are turning back to those weak and miserable forces. Miserable forces. Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? You are observing special days, months, seasons, and years. I fear for you that somehow I have wasted my efforts on you. Okay? Now, is he talking about Sabbath? Yes, he's talking about Sabbath. The Sabbath are days. Okay, Sabbath are days. Colossians talks about all of the law. Okay, when you continue to read, it's all about the whole, um, you know, about the law, keeping the law. Now we're going to go to 25. For it is written, be glad. No, wait a minute. We're going to go 25. Now, here he is talking about the two 
covenant. One covenant is made on Mount Sinai, Sinai and that is symbolic for Hagar, okay, Hagar, who brought forth Ishmael. And he was not of the promise. Okay? And he compares Hagar with the Israel, the present Israel. Okay? Or you can say also the law of Moses. That is all working law or working works. Okay? But we are not from Mount Sinai. We are not from Hagar. We are not from this present Jerusalem. But we are from the Jerusalem above. And he says in 26, but the Jerusalem that is above is free. And she is our mother. So Sarah is our mother. Because we're children of the promise. Now, I know this is hard to understand. And if you are not reading, if you're not reading the Bible with the Holy Spirit, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, and lots of people don't have the Holy Spirit, all this does not make any sense. Because you need to understand it with your heart. And that heart needs to be connected to God. And if you're not connected to the God, to God, you can read these things over and over again and they will not make sense. So, I suggest to read Galatians first. We can go to 5 and I have really uh, read uh, lots from from 5. Okay? It's an, I mean, the whole thing is really really excellent like i said he um talks a lot about circumcision not so much on the sabbath but sabbath is part of the law of moses it's part of the first covenant that they kept the covenant now people will say yeah but Sabbath was established early. I mean, in Genesis, God rested on the seventh, uh, seventh day. Yes, God rested on the seventh day. But you have to understand that the physical world is only a shadow of the spiritual things to come. And that is where we learn what we learn in Hebrews. But before we go to Hebrews, I want to read Colossians first. Colossians 2.16. Okay, 2.16. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink. And here he goes into the same thing again that he addressed in Galatians. Okay, but here it is a lot more specific. Because he addressed these themes in all or most of his letters. So, therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regards to a religious festival. What uh, a religious festival are you talking about? They're talking about the Feast of the Lord. In other words, you do not need to celebrate the Feast of the Lord. No. You need to understand that the feast of the Lord's Jesus Christ will fulfill. Again, he will fulfill them. That's what you need to understand. A new moon celebration or a Sabbath. A new moon celebration, of course, is the feasts are new moon celebrations. Um, no, wait a minute. Full moon celebration. Most of them are full moon. The new moon celebration is actually... Um, Rosh Hashanah. Okay? So no, you don't have to go by that. Or a Sabbath day. Now, listen to this. These are shadow, a shadow of things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Jesus Christ. 
Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head from whom the whole body is supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows as God causes it to grow. You understand? If you disconnect it from Jesus, you will not understand these things. And I know lots of people that tell me these things. They're telling me they have the Holy Spirit. And they blabber the Bible or quote the Bible, tell me the Bible over and over again. But they're not really looking at the whole thing. They're only telling you part of it. Those verses, they pull those verses out that they want. And we cannot do that. We have to look at everything. I mean, everything. There, somebody said to look at Romans as well. And I'm going to look at Romans if there is actually something there about the Sabbath as well. Because I would think everyone, everything has something really about um, that topic. Here, this is a good one too, yeah. Romans 14, 5. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whosoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whosoever eats meat does so to the Lord. For they give thanks to God and whosoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to the Lord. Okay? So you understand that? Keep reading. He is saying it's up to you whether you want to keep these things or not. But we are not under the old covenant anymore. Now let's go really fast to Hebrews. Let me see. I need to find Hebrews. And we're going to start. Now, Hebrews, you can read really everything in Hebrews. I mean, everything. Okay? This is unbelievable. All the things you can find in Hebrews. We're going to start with Hebrews 4. Okay? You can start with Hebrews 4. Now, this is very important, okay? Now, you can start with reading uh, 3, because this talks about the Sabbath rest. Remember, I just said in Hebrew says that as well. If you continue to read things in Hebrews, it tells you very clearly that the old things are only a shadow of the new things to come, the real things that Jesus had to fulfill. He was the only sacrifice, real sacrifice. Moses, the, 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 the sacrifices of the Levites were only a shadow. They were only temporary until the real thing would come. And that is what uh, Hebrews is talking about in detail. Okay, that the law, Moses' law, is only a shadow of things to come. And when Jesus comes, when the high priest comes, all these things are no longer valid or they are all taken out. And if you read, continue to read uh, Hebrews, you see that. If we get there, if I have enough time, we may get there. But now we are four. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest will, will uh, rest still stands. Now, let's understand the rest. What is the rest? We're talking about the rest that Jesus, that uh, we are resting um, on the seventh day. Remember, it's only physical. 
There are shadow of things to come. The Sabbath is only a shadow of things to come. God worked for six days and rested on the seventh. And he wants us to do the same thing. He wants us to work until the rest comes. And the rest comes through Jesus. Okay? Only through Jesus. It did not come because the Hebrews, and he said that in chapter 3, uh, entered the promised land. The rest didn't come through Joshua leading them in the promised land. It came when Jesus came. That's when the rest came. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still, still stands, Okay, and of course you have to read chapter 3 to understand that and have the Holy Spirit. Let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now we who have believed enter that rest just as God has said. And here again, he is talking about the Hebrews. So I declare an oath in my anger. They shall never enter my rest. Do you understand the Hebrews that keep going by the law of Moses, by the works, will never enter God's rest. And yet his work have been finished since the creation of the world for whosoever he has spoken about the seventh day in these works. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. And again, in the passage above, he says, they shall never enter my rest. Why? Because they did not accept Messiah. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience god again set a certain day calling it today this he did when a long time later he spoke through david as in the passage already quoted today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts for if joshua had given them rest god would not have spoken later about another day there remains then a sabbath rest for the people of god for everyone who enters god's rest also rests from their works just as god did from his let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience and he's again talking about the hebrews now i hope you do understand that very well and you can continue to read you know other um sections of hebrews like um, hebrew um chapter seven here it is again in hebrews seven eighteen. the former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless for the law made things for the law made nothing perfect and a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. Okay? Read those. Because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. Okay? So he's talking here about a better covenant over and over and over. Therefore, in verse 25, Therefore, he is also to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede with them. It is amazing. It's so amazing when I read Hebrews, because it's such a 
amazing book, but it's also a mysterious book. It's also a mysterious book, and I don't think that if you really don't have the Holy Spirit, that you can really understand it. That's why it's so important to be connected to Jesus. And if you don't understand, you need to understand, you know, easier things. Paul talked about the milk. If you still need to drink milk, do drink milk. Now, Hebrew is definitely hard meat that you can only chew and eat if you are, you know, a, a more mature Christian. But I'm telling you right now, this is what it says and i'm right now in hebrews 8 and 4 i wrote down 4 as well if he were on earth he would not be a priest for there are already priests who offer the gifts prescribed by the law they serve as a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven this is why moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle that he had to do everything exactly. Why? Because the earthly things are only a shadow of the heavenly things. And we need to understand that. We need to understand that. Here again, in Hebrews 8.8, 8, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. I will not be like, it will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them to Egypt. Okay, you can continue to read that because that is important too. So, I don't know if you at this point understand what heavenly things are and not earthly things we are now in a new covenant people and that new covenant includes sabbath but we're living in it daily we're living it in daily why because we can rest of our works now people will say well, does that mean we don't, we can do what we want? No, this is also written in Galatians. If you read Galatians uh, 5, do I still have it? Yeah. If you continue to read Galatians, it's very obvious. No, it says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. That is in Galatians 5, 13 through 15. And again, 16. So I say, walk in the spirit that you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. No. No. Paul is not saying do whatever you want. But when we are connected with the Holy Spirit, we bring the fruits of the Spirit. And the fruits of the Spirit, you can continue to read because he tells you what the, the, the fruits of the flesh is or the acts of the flesh and what the fruits of the Spirit are. Continue to read it. I have already done it in one of my other videos. Okay? Clearly, you can read these things. I don't have to read everything. Okay? At this point... I'm past my time anyways, and I know m many people go, and it is just above their head, okay? So that's why I'm trying to stay, uh, to not go past 40 minutes whatsoever. I, I, there was a time when I wanted to do 30 minutes, and I can't do it. It, it always ends up 40 minutes. So any, anyways, I will come to an end right now. Read these again, Galatians, Hebrews, Acts, all these things, you know, they're going to be on the bottom so you can look them up. Always let the Holy Spirit guide you people.